A Channel 2 investigation uncovers a part of the mortgage meltdown that may surprise you. You've heard about subprime mortgages given to people who couldn't afford them. But what about mortgages given to illegal immigrants? Channel 2's Amanda Rossiter tracked one woman's story and found a bigger problem that's part of the crisis. Amanda? Javita, millions of mortgages in the hands of illegal aliens, people in the country without property documentation, allowed to buy homes because a realtor or a lender wanted to make a sale. We found one of those stories right here in Atlanta, and parts of it surprised even us. The biggest bailout in American history all started with home loans handed out like candy, loans that were just too easy to get. How easy? We'll take a close look at this modest home in Roswell, Georgia. At first glance, it's nothing special until you consider its owner. She's six years old and she bought it when she was two. How that happened is part of a bigger problem that contributed to the national mortgage mess. This is my dream house. I've done nothing wrong. I did everything I was supposed to. Nicole Griffin negotiated this deal to buy the house from the Jimenez family who lived there. She made a deal with the family to move in ahead of the closing. Um, so they moved out, she moved now. in, and it's that's when the title search hit a roadblock. The family had purchased the house using the social security number of an Estefania Jimenez, the family's little girl. With a quick background check, we found the birth date connected with the social security number was 2002. There were signatures and initials on the closing papers, obviously not the child's handwriting. The sale couldn't happen unless the family cleared the title. Griffin would have to move again. How? How is this possible? How could this happen in America? The last time I checked, two-year-olds could not purchase uh, homes. And uh, this has been one of those stories that I think is just the tip of the iceberg. Georgia Attorney General Thurbert Baker says illegal aliens often use tax ID numbers, bogus Social Security numbers, or in this case, the Social Security number of a child born here in order to purchase a home all of which are illegal, rampant, and part of the subprime mess. He blames the brokers and the banks who let it happen. There's a reason why one in every 442 homes in this state are now in foreclosure. And part of it is because of fraud. Jimenez now faces deportation, charged with entering the country illegally. He did not understand the situation. His attorney says Jimenez always paid his mortgage on time, but was misled by the realtor who sold him the house. They were decisions made by people that he trusted and that he assumed was okay. The person he trusted was his real estate agent, a man who used the name Luis Rivera. We found he worked at this house here in Lawrenceville, used 14 other names, and made numerous other illegal deals. In fact, the Georgia Real Estate Commission investigated Rivera for fraud. In addition to listing false information on the papers, he set up a bogus company, listed real estate clients as company employees, and created bogus W-2s for them. He closed the deals and collected the commissions. When the state pulled his license, he told them he was moving to Puerto Rico. So we traveled here to San Juan to find Luis Rivera, the real estate agent who put this sales cycle in motion more than four years ago. We tracked him to this house in Puerto Rico, but it turns out he left a false address. He's never lived here and nobody's ever heard of him. This is a classic case of real estate fraud. And I'm sure had it been taken to the appropriate authorities, there would be a prosecution in this case. They're not even supposed to be in the country, let alone own a house and evict me. And Nicole Griffin, she went to court to try to continue with the sale and stay in the house. But the judge allowed Lorenzo Jimenez to evict her, and she moved out. But the family, now facing deportation, never moved back in. Now, like so many others, the house sits empty, its illegal title still intact. And that is just part of the story. As we dug deeper into how this all happened, we found another label, layer of the illegal mortgage problem that's been perpetuated by banks, lenders, and real estate leaders. It's another part that we are all paying for now, and we'll have that for you tomorrow at 5 o'clock. So just the tip of the proverbial iceberg. It just seems to go on and on. And to thank you.